All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start the front end application and then we're gonna check it out in the browser. So I'm gonna go to view and then open view. I want to open the uh, terminal panel and then I'm just gonna do ng serve and we're gonna let this come up. Now also make sure the back end is running. So my back end is running. Since this is making calls to the back end, you have to make sure that the back end is running as well. And as you can see here, uh, my back end is running and it's listening on port 8080. So let's wait for this to come up. And the application is up. So let's go in the browser and take a look. I'm going to go ahead and click OK and let this refresh. And it looks like we get an error. And that's because we didn't bring in the HTTP module. So whenever you're using the HTTP client, you have to bring in the HTTP module in the app module file. So I'm going to close this for a second. And as you can see here, we're using the HTTP client. So I have to go into the app module and then bring in the HTTP client module. So here I'm just going to do HTTP client module and make sure it's imported here from the same package and let the app rebuild. I'm going to open the terminal again. As you can see, the app compiled successfully. So let's go back to the browser. And now I'm getting a coarse error. So as you can see here, we're not able to reach out to the back end because of coarse configuration. And technically what this is, it's a policy that is enforced in all modern browsers, which means that an application running in one domain cannot access resources in another domain or in an application running in another domain. So we have to put a configuration in the back end to tell the back end, say, hey, allow this front end application running on this origin or this URL to access your resources. And if you want to know more about it, you can just go to this documentation from Mozilla and you can read more about it here. As you can see, it's a, it's a mechanism that uses HTTP headers to tell browsers to give a web application running in one origin access to selective resources from a different origin. So that's technically what's happening with us because this application is running on localhost 4200 and the backend is running on localhost 8080. So they can't communicate with each other because they belong to different domains unless the backend explicitly say, hey, allow this application running on this domain to access your resources. So let's go back to the backend and I'm going to minimize this for a second and I'm going to go to the main application class and then I'm going to put a course configuration here. So the course configuration is really boilerplate code. It's just something that you're probably going to you know, copy paste in every single application and then do slight modification to it. So I'm just going to paste the code and then I'm going to walk you through it. So I'm going to go down here and then paste it. And you can see it's a course filter configuration. So all we're doing here is to create a course filter. And for this, we need a course configuration. So in the configuration is where we set the what we want. So here you can see I'm allowing credential. I'm setting the allowed origin. In that case, it's our application running on 4200. And then below, I'm allowing certain headers. So origin, accept, authorization, etc. And then I'm also exposing certain headers. So you have to add all of those to the configuration. And I need to import this. And then we have to pass that configuration to a URL course configuration. So because this is all URL based, so we say, hey, create this new object, which is a URL based course configuration, and then pass our configuration, which is the regular course configuration. And we set that to all the routes in the application, which is the root route of the application, which is forward slash star star. And then we return a new course filter with that URL based course configuration. So that's all we have to do here and make sure you have everything imported. And this is really a piece of code that I just have somewhere on, in some GitHub repository. And I just copy and paste it every time. And then I make some slight modification to it because it's pretty much going to be the same every time you're building this type of application and then you want access to some front end application. So you'll probably have some configuration similar to this. So that's why I just have it somewhere and I just copy and paste it every time. And then I change the headers that I want to expose and the methods that I want to expose. So now I'm going to go ahead and restart this back end application. So I'm going to restart it and let it come up. So the application is up. Let's see. All right. So we're running. So let's go back to the browser and let this refresh. And now if I zoom in, you can see since we're console logging the employees, you can see they're all here. And if I zoom in here, you can see we have all the employees here. So our app is working as expected. So what I'm going to do in the next lecture is to just show you guys the UI that I'm going to be using or the HTML template that I'm going to be using. So I'll see you guys in the next one.